If you're a filmmaker, like it or not, everything you have now requires power, at least almost everything requires power. So having a good battery station or something where you can recharge your devices, especially if you operate off-grid at all, like I do actually a fair amount, and especially if you fly drones, then you're gonna need a lot of power. DJI sent me their Power Station 1000 a few weeks ago, and I've been testing it in a whole bunch of different situations. And out of all the power stations I've used, it's one of the best. Not without its caveats, but it's definitely really well thought out, especially if you fly any of DJI's latest drones. Now, in full disclosure, DJI did send me the Power Station 1000 to test. I do get to keep it. But other than that, they get no input into this video and no other money changed hands. There are a few things that set the DJI power stations apart from other power stations that I've used. The first is it can go from 0% to 100% in 70 minutes. Honestly, if I'm in 20, 25% or so, it takes about 50 to 55 minutes to fully recharge it on the max setting. Now, if you wanna maintain the longest battery life possible and not push the batteries any harder than you absolutely need to, you can switch this to 600 watts and then it will recharge at a slower rate, still very fast, but it will slow down. And when it comes to recharging, while most power stations I've used have a large external power brick when you're gonna recharge over AC, this one just has a three prong port that you plug into directly into your wall. And uh, I really like that because it makes it really clean and really easy. A couple of other things that have really stood out to me after using this for the last few weeks is how quiet the power station is. I have run this uh, with like as much things as I could plug in, recharging batteries, running a computer, running a Starlink system, all of that. And this has uh, barely even coughed at it. The fans, when they do turn on, are extremely quiet. And even recharging at the highest speed possible, the noise is absolutely minimal, which is in stark contrast to the other units I've used where the power bricks that they generally have are extremely loud. So I always stick them in the garage so that I don't have to listen to it the entire time it's recharging. So the Power Station 1000 has a little over 1000 watt hours of power in it, which is a ton. I've used a 500 watt hour station and recharged six batteries for the Inspire 2, which is a lot of power. This should be able to charge eight to 10 batteries really easily on the Inspire 2 or a whole bunch of other stuff if you're working with it. Uh, the Power Station 1000 for me, has been fantastic for working with on the road. And in addition to that, it will deliver up to 2,200 watts of power total, which is a lot. I mean, that is everything I've been able to plug into this uh, all at once, other than like coffee maker, hair dryers, something like that. Uh, this has been able to power everything with ease because I'm usually generally only pulling maybe a thousand watts when I've plugged everything into this. Now in operation, this is really simple to use. It's got a single button push and hold to turn it on. You hear the familiar beep and then you can see a nice clear display. You might have a little trouble today because it's so bright out, but you can see a nice clear display of how much percentage the battery has left charge wise and then any whatever's coming into it or whatever's going out of it will be shown there as well as an estimate of how much time how much run time you have at the current settings and then over here uh, we've got the two ac power ports which you push and hold to turn those on and then that turns an inverter on that then you can power anything you need that runs off ac power so i've been using this for a pretty heavy duty battery charger for an enterprise drone i've been working with and then also a Starlink system. And then coming across, you have two USB-A ports and two USB-C ports. Now the USB-A ports, pretty standard. They'll give you USB-A power, which is nice. You recharge your phone or something like uh, simple, GoPros, action cameras, anything like that. Uh, the USB-C ports will deliver up to 140 watts of power. So if you're gonna recharge a MacBook Pro or power a MacBook Pro, it has no problem with that at all. I've used it a bunch when I've been processing data for some of the uh, mapping things that I've been working on with the state of Alaska. And then coming over here, these SDC ports are something that are really interesting. They're an intelligent port that DJI uh, has created so that you can buy these cables, which are about $19 each uh, as a general rule. I have a few of them in here. They made one for the Mavic 3 and they made one for the Air 3 and there might be other options coming. I know they've made some for the Inspire, which I will be buying because I have an Inspire coming. But essentially you plug your battery in. Uh, I've got an Air 3 battery here and a Mavic 3 battery. Plug those in. 
plug them into here, and then the system will fast charge your batteries from 10% to 90% in 30 minutes, and then finish uh, charging the rest of the batteries the last 10% at a slower rate so it doesn't damage the cells. But you can essentially charge a drone battery, a Mavic 3 Air 3 battery, from 10% all the way to 100% in about 40 minutes. But also because it has the USB-C ports, you can fast charge on the multi-chargers for the, say you wanna do the Air 3 or uh, the Avada in this case, plug it in, and then you will see it begin to fast charge. So because DJI has built this system and because DJI makes all these drones, the systems work really well together and it will fast charge pretty much anything DJI makes at the fastest rates possible without damaging the batteries, which is hugely helpful if you're somebody like me and you're out off the grid or away from power a lot of times when you're working on a job and you can be able to recharge your batteries quickly so that you can continue to work rather than having to buy 10 Mavic batteries or 10 Air 3 batteries or you know 12, 14 Inspire batteries, you could get away with less batteries and just be able to charge them quickly on this system. Hey, if you're enjoying or getting value out of this video, then consider subscribing. My goal is to help solo creators like myself make the best decisions when it comes to purchasing gear, but also get the most out of the gear that you might already own by teaching you how to use it. Now you can also get a solar adapter for this, which is an MPT, MPPT controller. You can plug in up to four solar panels into each one and charge up to 400 watts of solar power per SDC port, which is a lot of power. I only have a 100 watt power, or I only have a 100 watt panel, and I don't have the uh, solar panel adapter yet. Apparently you can use this, but this is supposed to be limited to 24 volts, and my panel outputs about 30 volts, and so I'm a little hesitant to try it. But you can also recharge from your car based on this. Uh, same thing, you have this adapter that goes to an XT60, and then this that goes into your uh, 12 volt uh, power port in your car and then uh, goes to XT60 and it will pull about 100 watts. And one thing that's really nice that DJI has done is made this great carrying case here, which I really appreciate, especially if you're somebody who operates in maybe slightly snowy locations or dusty locations is you can protect the power station because this is nice, uh, you know, somewhat weather resistant exterior. It's not like waterproof or anything like that, but it does work and they really thought of it well because on the sides you have these zippered pockets that you can tuck down into these little elastic spots which gives the power station the ventilation that it needs to be able to recharge or to you know put out the amount of power it needs to put out and then on the front side we also have this flap here which then gives you access to all of the uh, feature or all of the functions of the front panel now, if you want to keep that panel up, it's the only thing as I wish there was a little Velcro or something up in here, I might just put that on myself. The power station also has a UPS functionality. So if you're working at home and you have this plugged into mains, but you have stuff that maybe is critical and you've been having power outages or brownouts or something like that, you can keep stuff plugged into this that's critical and it will act as a switching power system where it'll switch to battery power when it needs to, to keep your computer going, whatever it might be and then switch back to mains power as it can through the power pass through. I've had the opportunity to work with the Power Station 1000 and the Power Station 500 because my friend Jevin Dovey and I took both of them out into a trip out into the desert. And we used the Power Station 500, which is a great little size, 500 watt hours. Uh, honestly, I've loved working with them so much that I'm buying a Power Station 500 myself because it's such a fantastic size for portability. It weighs about 14, 15 pounds. Now, as I said before, this comes in two different flavors. You have a 500 watt hour, the Power Station 500, and then you have the 1000 watt hour, the Power Station 1000. Both of them right now are on sale for a crazy good deal, under $400 for the Power Station 500 and under $700 for the Power Station 1000. That is by far the most economical, best uh, price that I've seen on a Power Station of these two sizes. And of course, if you wanna pick those up, there's, there are affiliate links in the description below. There are a couple of things that I find kind of weird that are missing features. There's no wireless charging on the top, which for me is fine because honestly, the power stations that I have that do have wireless charging on the top, I find it wastes extra power. And frankly, a lot of times it can get pretty warm if something's sitting up there that's slightly magnetic and 
triggers the wireless charging. So I'm fine without the wireless charging. But the other thing that I find odd that's not on here is an app or any sort of you know Bluetooth functionality where you can wirelessly communicate with this system to see where the temperature of the batteries is, where the charge state is, or the health life cycle of the batteries or anything like that. Overall, as somebody who uses power stations a lot or generators a lot, I really do appreciate the thoughtful design that DJI's put into this system, both making it ultra quiet so I can use it right next to myself on set or you know on a location without disturbing anything, but also the amount of power that this is capable of putting out, how fast it recharges, how fast it charges DJI drone batteries, if you have the little SDC connections here, or even just through the USB-C, is been absolutely fantastic. Next, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video right here. I'll see you over there. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below, or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.